According to what the Father has spoken to us today, I dismantle every false authority that is preventing you from achieving your goal of breaking the net. You are not chained by your debt. You will not be deterred by your illness. You are getting rid of people who are difficult to deal with, and a loyal friendship is making its way to you. I will put you in the company of people who will not use the armament that is only built to attack the gates of hell against each other that they are going to use against each other. My name is God, and I have brought you up. You have been provided for by me. You are the recipient of my anointing, and I have designated you. Break free from the ties that bind you to a false sense of intimacy. Take yourself off of Delilah's lap and stand up. I will use the tenth stake of my word to guide you through the illegitimate thing that Sisera has brought into your life. Having heard your cries for visitation, I want you to know that I am here to provide it. I have come with one intention and one intention only, to lose you and let you go. I have come with this intention. I have set you free, so come into the freedom that I have provided for you. Get out of the false comforts that Egypt has to offer, which are the leeks and garlics. Put an end to the addictions that the mind and the body have developed. Let go of the shackles of relationships that have been misguided and come out to the spot that I have prepared for you right here by me. This is the location where your purpose will be accomplished and your destiny will be realized. Today, the Father reminds us to put our faith in my guidance for your life. Were you aware that you hold the title of King? Have you ever heard that the Lord has the heart of a monarch in his hands, and that I have the power to direct it in whatever direction I choose? Have you thought about this? Do you believe that it is applicable to you in your role as a priest and a king in my kingdom? Consequently, why do you have the presumption that you are always in the wrong? Occasionally, you are in the wrong. You will find that there are moments when you believe you have made a mistake, but in reality, you are correct more frequently than people who never challenge themselves. You may rely on my direction. Do not be scared to make a mistake because I will make it possible for you to succeed despite the faults you make. What I think is not the same as what you think. Your success is not contingent on your ability to figure out who I am. Possess a sufficient amount of trust to be completely oblivious. Every time you fool yourself into thinking that you know what I will do next, your natural reasoning will back you up. As Abraham left, he did not have any idea where he was going. Is it not true that everything worked out nicely for him or not? You should not have the mindset that you need to complete everything just so, or else I will bring you to the brink of failure. I am not the God of failure, rather, I am the God of accomplishing a goal. Have faith in me as you navigate the unknowable maze. I will take you out into the place where you will be blessed. According to what the Father has revealed to us today, the chain that you believe is holding you back is rendered meaningless when my name is mentioned. Exaggerating the strength with which he engages in opposition to you is one of the most effective strategies employed by the adversary. Do you have any idea how liberated you really are? According to the Father, everything is only smoke and mirrors. With your eyes open, you will see that the person whom the Son has set free is, in fact, free. Your adversary does not want you to be aware of this. People in your immediate vicinity who have little or no religion would rather see you restrained. If you are able to move freely, they are aware that their own unhealthy relationship with constraint is illegitimate. My spirit resides inside you and freedom can be found wherever my spirit is present. Despite everything that I have done on your behalf, if you are not experiencing that liberty, it is because of the circumstances. Before the chain of your servitude was ever forged, I made provisions for you 2,000 years ago. Get out of there. Accept the freedom you have. 
Cast off the chains, for they are no longer able to hold you. Rouse yourself from the sluggishness of pessimism. You should be aware that the iron gates that appear to be holding you captive are standing wide open, calling you to take advantage of the escape that I have offered from every snare, including the one that you believe will never be broken in your life. What God is saying to you today is that you must not allow the past to consume you once more. Bless, forgive, and let go of the past. You will not only liberate other people, but you will also liberate yourself from the snare that the adversary has set for you. Your history does not provide any insight into the circumstances of the present or into the future. The setbacks and negative experiences that you have had in the past will not determine the course of events that occur in the future. Just keep in mind Lot's wife. She became a pillar of salt as a result of the backward glance that was being given to her. That is not your share of the pie. Beloved, continue to look forward. Do not pay attention to the reverberations of the past, rather, focus on the things that are still to come. Those who refuse to move beyond their previous experiences and old resentments should not be allowed to become embroiled in the lives of others without your permission. I loved him, but I let him go at the same time that I did with the wealthy young ruler. There are persons in your life who are exactly like he or she. There is no end to your love for them. Despite the fact that you never stop praying for them, you are forced to confront the reality that if you are going to be a seeker of the kingdom, you cannot take them by yourself. God promises that if you make the big decision, you will receive the large reward, even on this very day. According to what the Father has declared today, promotion and prosperity come along with strain and persecution. This was the promise that I made to those who followed me, a hundredfold return, accompanied by persecutions. There are always going to be people in your immediate vicinity who are trying to undermine and distract you from my purpose. Put them out of your thoughts. Give them to me, together with the problems that they bring, and I will take care of them. I shall be responsible for supervising the things that you are unable to change. It is not a sign of futility or failure to be unable to change something that you cannot change. In a nutshell, those periods of irritation and anguish are merely the entry points where I go in and perform for you what you are unable to do for yourself. Get ready to take on a new responsibility. It is the time to advance into new territory and greater victories in my kingdom when you wish to recede and consolidate your losses. This is the time to do so. Your elevation and your blessing will continue in a line that is uninterrupted, which will create an unshakable evidence of my faithfulness and my goodness in your life over the course of your lifetime. Move on from the past. Ignore the setbacks that occurred the day before. I am here, you should talk to me. Your complaint will be brought to my attention, and I will envelop you in my loving compassion. I will also send the comfort of my Holy Spirit to lift your spirit and establish a fresh joy in your heart. Receive today, says God, the fresh breezes of encouragement that are sent from my throne to deliver you into the secure harbor of the tomorrows I have prepared in your favor. I have prepared these tomorrows for you. Today, the Father instructs us to distance ourselves from them and to leave them behind. To follow the throng, I have not called you to come with me. I don't necessarily agree with what everyone else is saying and doing just because they are doing it themselves. The ideas that I have are not those that guys have. You have the ability to put on the mentality of Christ, but my mind is not the mind of a man. When compared to the outcomes you have encountered in the past, are you prepared to face something more different? Then pay attention to my voice, for I am the one who is speaking. It is as if I am whispering over your shoulder, this is the way walk ye in it. There is no misdirection, and I will never lead you into a scenario that is a dead end. 
Those who believe they know what is best for you are trying to have you end up in the grave like Lazarus, dressed in the clothing of their unbelief. Be free and let go, that is what I tell you to do. With the exception of loving them, you owe them nothing. You cannot let other people to force you to dance to their song for any reason, regardless of whether they are mourning or pipe smoking. When the night season arrives, when the deep speaks to the deep, you should turn a deaf ear to everything other than what I have said and what I have promised you. God says that you are going to come out, so be sure that you don't carry any elements of unbelief with you. Today, the Father instructs us to enter into the work that has been completed on the cross. It is a wrong course of action to wait for me to achieve something that is more significant than what I did on the cross. When I gave you the very best that heaven has to offer in the form of my Son, I did not leave anything out. It is through Jesus that I have bestowed upon you everything that is related to life and godliness. You and your faith are responsible for drawing upon and gaining access to everything that heaven has to offer via radical trust and courageous acts of obedience. This is your responsibility. I am not going to be hesitant about you. You are not aimlessly waiting for something that is already yours in the completed work of Calvary, rather, you are actively participating in the process. Put your faith in the fact that my word is trustworthy and that I will keep my promise. When confronted with a challenge, conduct yourself in the same manner that I would if I were in your position, because I am. I am one with you, and you are one with me. Regardless of the many factors that are working against you, the fact remains that you and I together comprise a majority. It makes no difference if you are not powerful or intelligent enough to anticipate what they will do next. Everything is irrelevant. For what reason are you concerned about an adversary that I have already vanquished? What is it about the losing team or what they intend to do next that makes you so concerned? You are more than a man who has conquered. In the course of your day, go out and demonstrate your faith by acting with joy, knowing that everything that I have promised will be your witness before the sun goes down. In this day and age, the Father instructs us to avoid putting our pearls before swine. Your ideas about what constitutes solid wisdom will be completely disregarded by the people you plan to communicate with. If you were to provoke the rebellion in their minds, even if it was with the best of intentions, why would you subject their hearts to the suffering of sin? It is important to resist the urge to interfere in situations when you have not been invited. According to the Father, you should never answer a question that you have not been asked first. You should never answer there. The door of inquiry that I open is the only other place where you can exercise any authority. The only thing you need to do is continue praying. Your prayers are doing more than can ever be possible with your disagreeable advice. Always keep in mind that the person who interferes in the business of others without their permission is like a strange dog by the ears. Stay patient and continue to pray. It is important to be aware that angels are working to put an end to decisions that are unwise. In the presence of your faith, even the most foolish individual will be sanctified and drawn into the ark of safety. Despite the fact that things appear to be at their worst, I am still working behind the scenes. My words are being validated by the indicators that are following. My hands are extended to those who disobey me throughout the entire day. There will be no doubt about that, regardless of whether they listen or choose to ignore it, because I will make the way forward very apparent. When it comes to the lives of those who are out of the way, it is your responsibility to maintain the posture of prayer and to proclaim your trust rather than your doubt. At this point, the Father continues, things are going to start to get easier. When all of a sudden my yoke is easy and your burden is light, you will know that you have come to me. Despite the fact that this is not the consensus of the counsels of the ignorant, it is the unmistakable evidence of my word. This day, 
The word that best describes your existence is, Yokeezy. My intention for you is to lighten your burden, proclaims God. The crushing burden that is holding you captive is not anything that originates from my throne. Put your natural understanding to the side and learn to see things through the eyes of the Spirit. In every difficulty and every encounter with the adversary, I have made it possible for you to flee to me, and in a split second, you will be able to observe the clouds of darkness vanish, revealing the brightness of my promise in the most impossible of circumstances. The Father encourages you to enter into rest. This is a lesson that has not yet been learned by neither those who strive nor those who struggle. Because the winds were blowing in the opposite direction, the disciples were rowing with all of their strength in the storm, but they were not making any progress. Are you making no progress at all? I did, in fact, give you the direction to walk to the opposite side, and I will continue to give you that instruction. The circumstance that you are currently dealing with is just temporary. Currently, you are in the process of coming to the opposite side of that procedure. Using only your own strength, you will not be able to reach your destination. Please allow me to join you in the bow of your boat. These seas, which appear to be inaccessible, are actually the waves that I am strolling on at this very moment in order to bring you to a quick stop. It is both who I am and what I do. Open your heart and take a deep breath of the fidelity that I offer. Put your mind at ease with the assurance that I will always be by your side, guiding you to the heavenly shores of the destiny that has been promised to you. In your life, heaven has arrived on earth, as the Father has revealed to you today. I am bringing the ideas and teachings of my power into your life and making them a manifest reality in your existence. It was never my intention for you to slog through the day with the crushing weight of weights and difficulties that you are carrying. It is my opinion that you are not feeble, and that you have not given up. Raise yourself up and free yourself from the shackles of sadness and doubt. Refuse to be consumed by fear or panic anymore. Rather than being called to decrease, you are being called to increase. Because my government is constantly expanding, you are constantly expanding as well. This is because my government is directing and directing you to that area of promotion where the blessing is your default state every day of the world. That is why you are constantly expanding. Eliminate the erroneous teachings that will only serve to fill you with a sense of unbelief. There are men who have made an effort to entice you into embracing as part of my plan things that I went to the cross in order to get away from you. My voice is calling out to you, says God. I will never have the intention of putting on you what the cross was designed to remove from you. Let this be your belief, and acknowledge it as the most fundamental truth that my word contains. If something isn't good, then it's not me. If the answer is not life and life in greater abundance, then it has nothing to do with me or with the plan that I have for your life. Get away from anyone who teach you anything other than the word of my promise, for this is the moment and the hour that I am bringing you into the location where you will be blessed. Today, the Father encourages you to make it your goal to conduct your life according to the rhythm of forgiving, releasing, and blessing. This is something you should repeat to yourself as you go about your day, I forgive. I give up. After saying, I bless, you should next add the names of all the persons who have caused you pain or given you frustration. As the names and faces of those who have been dead for a very long time show up in front of you, you should decide to forgive them immediately. You should go ahead and let them go. In order to discover the freedom that simple prayer will offer to you, you do not require some kind of violent or emotional catharsis experience. It is not necessary for you to go through some sort of medieval ceremony in order to free yourself from the burden and the sin of resentment that has been holding you back for such a long time. 
I will not allow you to go another day without the liberty of total and total forgiveness for those who have wronged you. I will not allow you to live without this freedom. They were, in fact, incorrect. No, they will never be able to witness it. The things that they think and the things that they do are irrelevant. What important is that you make the decision to come out from beneath the skies of brass that are the ceiling, which are blocking the prayers of those who refuse to forgive. Today is your day to be free. Because of the wounds you've experienced in the past, you need to free yourself from the clutches of the enemy. It is not worth wasting another day to continue to grind in the mill of resentment or inability to forgive. You are not going to like the bread that comes from laziness or the things that it brings into your life. In the process of learning to release yourself by releasing others, I have something more beneficial for you to consider. There is a higher law than the law of sowing and reaping, according to what the Father has revealed to us today. As you progress toward the law of love that is found in Christ Jesus, you will eventually transform into the master of your own harvest. It is at this very moment that I shall bring about the plowman to triumph over the reaper in your own life. In this particular season, the seeds of trust that you plant will generate a harvest before they even have a chance to reach the ground. In what way does something occur, and at what point does it take place? The reason for this is not because you adhere to some meaningless religious program or prayer routine. This is a form of vanity, and I have not invited you to engage in vanity. I have summoned you to sit at my right hand and observe the footstool that your adversaries have fashioned for you. Due to the fact that faith is the only thing that works in love, there is no basis for fear in love. Due to the fact that I gave every man the same amount of faith, you are aware that you possess the faith to move mountains. How come it isn't succeeding? You have to make your way up into the law of love. Love goes beyond the concept of sowing and reaping, and once you realize this, you stop expecting other people to love you back for all the goodness you have shown them. You are going to stop asking and demanding what you believe is coming to you, and you are going to start receiving what I have in store for you. To walk in the entitlement of sons and daughters who reflect my nature and my character on the earth is what it means to be a son and a daughter of the highest. This is what it means to be a son and a daughter of the highest. There is no fear in love, and in the law of love, you will discover the failure-proof place of divine entitlement and faith that is beyond anything you have ever experienced. In today's message, the Father affirms that it is my goodness that brings you to the place where you might repent. There are many who have argued that I am hitting you or making your life difficult in order to teach you anything. That encounter is not something that I have had before. While Christ was hanging on the cross, I took all of the suffering and all of the judgment and poured it out on him. To what extent would I have been able to withhold some of the burden of suffering from Calvary in order to have something to inflict onto you instead? In the event that I were to afflict you, I would have to go and take part of the pains that Jesus endured away from you, and then my word would be rendered without any validity. I am a God of good things ever laid up in store for you in the glory says God, and I want you to learn the lesson of the full price that Calvary paid for everything. It is God who invites you to enter the hidden region. Get away from the lies that the enemy is telling you and the lies that the situation is telling you, and fill yourself up with my truth. I invite you to take pleasure in my truth and to take pleasure in my truth, for my truth will liberate you from every religious misunderstanding. Obtain the freedom that I have bestowed to you today, and I will grant it to you. Do you have something that you would like to learn? Without a doubt, you do. I am the teacher, not the scenario or the agony that you are going through in that condition that you are battling with. You require instruction, but my spirit is the teacher. 
Get rid of that religious way of thinking and simply express gratitude to me for the fact that you are my son and my daughter, who are entitled to be here. The payment has been paid, and the promise is currently being made a reality today. As you come to terms with the fundamental reality of who I am and the life that I am bringing into your life in a more abundant manner, everything is going to experience a transformation. This day, the Father declares that there is nothing to be afraid of. Every other dread is dirty, but the fear of the Lord is the only one that is pure. Fear of failure, fear of lack, and dread of disease are all manifestations of a mentality that is characterized by a lack of cleanliness. God declares that you are not unclean because the word that I have spoken to you has cleaned you away from any impurity. In the name of your redemption, receive the word. I have rescued you from the domain of terror and transferred you to a setting that is foreign to suffering, loss, and death. I have also translated you into a strange atmosphere. Please take it. You must take a stand in your faith and fight off the fear that is trying to consume you. Instead of waiting for the adversary to attack you and take your blessing, you should stop waiting. Since you are a part of me and I am a part of you, the adversary is unable to take anything from you more than he is able to steal from me. If you enter the tower of my name, God declares, you will be protected from any danger that may come your way. Does the adversary express their intent to harm you through their breath? Have a good chuckle, for he will not be able to take anything away from you that I will not return to you tenfold. I will do my best, and when the enemy does his worst, you will be left laughing and applauding because the answer has come and deliverance is yours. Just smile and know that I will do my best. This day, the Father declares that you are not my adversary. No, I am not going to oppose you or put any limitations on you in any manner. I am unlocking you to the fullness of sons in your own right. I refer to you as you cherished. I refer to you as my fortunate sons and my privileged daughters on this particular day. It is more important to focus on the promise rather than the conflict. I am sending the promise of my son into your life at this very moment, and it will be made manifestation in your circumstances today. Today is the day that your sonship is demonstrated and made plain. It is I who shines the light that illuminates each and every man and woman who is born into this world. You can look to me as the light that guides your way. As you move forward, you do not need to be concerned about being misled or having your foot fail or fall because I would never do one of those things. There is no such thing as failure in paradise, so I cannot be considered the God of failure. No longer should you find yourself saying, my God is teaching me through this failure. No, failure is not your teacher. Rather, the Holy Spirit is your teacher. In paradise, there is no such thing as failure, so if failure is the only thing that teaches you, then heaven will be filled of people who are uneducated. God says, Come, let us reason together, and I will take you beyond the misconceptions of religious thinking and set you free to think and act as a son of God. Come, let us have a conversation about faith. Today, the Father instructs us to stop looking at the things that can be seen and instead focus on the things that cannot be seen. When you take a look at what you see, you will certainly find yourself asking questions such, why does God allow this or that to take place? I am not pleased or glorified by that query, declares God. That is not the question that I hear. The question that needs to be answered is, what aspects of your life do you wish to change? You have requested, and you have asked with faith. The person who looks not at the external condition and asks why, but rather looks at the invisible promise and declares it into existence by the word of faith that I have conveyed to you, will find that nothing is impossible to them. Pray with your mouth alone. 
If you give me the opportunity to speak, I will flood your mouth with my speech. My message will become visible substance in your life as it comes out of your tongue and spreads throughout your life. There is no such thing as a kid of deprivation. Not only have I called you to the entitlement of sons, but I have also called you to the rejection of the other. Say to yourself every day, as he is, so am I on the earth. It does not matter if it appears to be real or if it feels like it is correct, this is the most fundamental truth that you will ever encounter in your life. Not only should you be aware of this, but you should also accept it as your fundamental sense of reality. The manifestation of it will occur, and all of a sudden, everything that you say and do will become just as valid as if I had said or done it myself. Today, the Father instructs you to remove any distractions from your life. It is imperative that you do not let anything distract you from the crop that you are working on. Your adversary wants you to take your eyes off the harvest because he is aware that as you seek my kingdom, an abundance of things will be added to you. The phrase, all things added, is one that I want you to believe in. When the entire advantages of Calvary are poured into your life, are you ready to receive them? Currently, the moment is right, and it is available. Despite the fact that many get called, only a select few are selected. Because I have chosen you. I chose you and myself before the world even began, before you ever had the opportunity to select me before the world even began. I chose you not as a means of causing sorrow but rather as a beneficiary of the glory that I have for himself. My glory is being showered upon you on this day, and inside the splendor is the fulfillment of every need that you could possibly have ever conceived of. Due to the fact that my kingdom is established in the glory, there is rule in the glory. While you are looking for my face, you will have the feeling of everything being added to you and this includes everything. Can you accept everything, or do you only believe in some things? What is it that you believe I am keeping from you until you reach heaven for you to receive? That you should pray, as in heaven so on earth, is something that I did not mention, this is the way to pray, and you should change your expectations to reflect that hope. Heaven is devoid of death, disease, illness, and pain. There is no such thing. In the same way that you recite that prayer, heaven will come down to earth in your life as you go out into the world looking for people who are lost and introducing them to the grandeur that I am exhibiting in your life right now. Enter into the fellowship of my suffering, which is the pain that puts a stop to all suffering, says the Father today. The moment you enter into the suffering that I have already completed, dear, it puts a stop to every pain, wound, and grief that might ever have an impact on your life. In order to save you from being rejected, oppressed, afflicted with disease, and harmed, I paid the lawful price. It is my deepest, most heartfelt wish that you are blessed with good health and prosperity. It begs the question, why would I ever abandon you to endure pain and anguish? My heart has been misinterpreted toward you by men, and many have claimed that they did it in my name. You are telling a falsehood. The reality is that I have promised. Therefore, take a firm grasp on the fact that I love you and that I have poured out all of my kindness into your life. Even in situations where you need to receive discipline and repentance, I will bring these things about in your life by my goodness rather than through my severity. My son was subjected to the full extent of my severity and judgment on the cross at Calvary. If all suffering was placed on Jesus, then where could I go to get the suffering that the counsels of those who are not well informed believe I am inflicting upon you? God encourages us to have faith in the good news. I want you to believe that I am making my way to bless you and set you free. Have faith that I am providing for you and releasing you from your shackles on this very day, for that is your share, 
and the price was paid in full for you 2,000 years ago.